Hi and welcome back to the channel and if this is your first time, welcome to YouTube. This video is actually long overdue. A while back I was doing a whole lot of maintenance on my bike with the entire drivetrain eventually needing to be replaced. So this was all done before the Cape Town Cycle Tour so if you're familiar with that race or the video that I uploaded then you'll know that everything was done. But in the video where I replaced my cassette I went out to go and test and was hit with the realization that my chain ring was also worn out and was also in need of replacement. So I ordered the exact same chain ring from the manufacturer who is Line Components. They are a local brand based in Cape Town so dealing with them should be more to my advantage. So to give you some specifications this is a direct mount 34 tooth non-boost 6mm offset chain ring. So enough with the chit chat and let's see how it went down. So this time, someone borrowed me some tools. What I'm going to need to do the job is a new chain ring, obviously. I have this smaller torque wrench for lower torque settings, this T25 Torx bit for the mounting screws of the chain ring, a bigger torque wrench with larger range of torque, an extendable power bar slash socket wrench, and a grease gun with bicycle specific grease. If you look at the non-drive end crank, there is a self-retracting bolt that if loosened will make contact with this outer cap which must not move. So loosening the retracting bolt against the outer cap is what will retract the bolt from the shaft. If I put in the appropriate size allen key for the retracting bolt, you'll see there is a gap between the allen key and the outer cap. So the outer cap is not the same size and will not loosen with the retracting bolt. So to loosen the cranks, I'm going to take the allen key socket and attach it to the power bar socket wrench and extend it for more leverage. Now I'm going to start loosening the retracting bolt to retract the non-drive-in crank from the shaft. The first turn to loosen will feel tight, then it will turn pretty easily until the retracting bolt makes contact to the outer cap. From there it will feel a little harder because now it's busy retracting from the shaft. From this angle, you can see how the crank is retracting from the non-driving side. With the non-driving crank removed, the driving side with the shaft slides out with no effort. Before loosening the small screws that hold the chain ring, I'm going to remove this bearing end shield that came off as well, and this suspension washer. To loosen, I'm going to use the small torque wrench with the small torx bit. Most manufacturers insist that these screws be tightened with some grade of thread lock but this doesn't seem to be the case here. With all the screws removed, the chain ring is still pretty on there, so I'm just going to use the wrong tool for the job to whack it loose. With the chain ring removed, I'm going to clean everything as well as I can before putting it all back together. Looking at the chain ring, you'll notice specific grooves that connects like a puzzle piece into the drive-in crank. Now we can start with some lubrication by getting the grease involved. I'm putting some grease here where the chain ring connects onto 
to maybe prevent it from being stuck the next time I want to remove it. To fit the chainring to the crankshaft, you'll see that because of those grooves, it's really easy to get the orientation correct, because it will only go on one way. With the chainring in place, all that is left is to add the screws. I'm not adding a thread lock, because I'm pretty confident that when all three of them are at the correct torque, they will not come loose. Thanks to some advice, I'm setting the torque wrench to 8 Newton meters of torque. I'm going to add some grease to the areas I feel will get the most wear. As you can see, the shaft has signs of wear there where the bearings make contact. Now the suspension washer goes back into place, as well as the end shield of the bearing that came out when I removed the crank. It's time to slide in the crankshaft gently and making sure there are no issues. To line up the cranks correctly, I'm pointing the drive-in crank straight up and the non-drive-in crank straight down. Turn in the retracting bolt by hand. And now I'm going to set the torque wrench to 40 Newton meters. It was recommended to be between 40 and 50. And now we tighten. Getting the right leverage to reach the actual torque is helpful. So there you go, the job is done. But these cranks are not spinning freely. So as you can see, the crank arms are not spinning freely, which they should be doing. So consulting with the guy that borrowed me the tools, we came to the conclusion that the job was done correctly, but it looked like there was now an issue with the spacing, which doesn't make sense because the only thing that changed was the exact same chainring. So this guy was keen on figuring out where the problem was. So I was planning on dropping the bike off by his house and awaiting his call. But before doing this, I sent an email to Line Components to ask if they could shine some light on the problem. Thankfully, they replied. And what it came down to is they figured that the problem was with the bottom bracket. This would mean that there was a problem with the bottom bracket from the start. They recommended a certain bottom bracket that I should order, which would then sort out my problem. Luckily, the guy where I dropped off my bike, who was now looking for the issue, could rectify the problem without replacing the bottom bracket. He did, however, remove the end shield from the non-drive-in side bearing of the mounted bottom bracket and replace this with the end shield of one of the bearings of another bottom bracket. This bottom bracket actually being the one that line components recommended. He just happened to have one lying around. And this then seemed to sort out the spacing. This was obviously not one and done. He took some time to figure this out, but I'm very grateful for his help and for the knowledge that he had to share. So what started out as replacing a chain ended up in replacing a cassette and a chain ring as well. So that is the end of the video. I I hope you learned something and if not hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did give me a like and I'll like see you in the next one